have on that one, so let's proceed with the next one. That is REZ 2016-11, Creekside West, sir. Yes, sir. Ultimately, what is happening with this case is a partnership with the county to take a site plan that was approved back in 2006 for the Creekside West subdivision and bring it to a point to where the entire site plan for the community is updated. Um, when I've spoken to citizens in the area, and I probably got um, probably two to three phone calls um, checking in on the request, wanting to know what's happening. What I tell them is this is a master plan update for the subdivision. Um, I confirm with them normally that they're reducing the number of units from 300 were, were allowed to now 242 is the requested number. It's still maintaining all single family uh, dwellings. There's no apartments or no duplexes allowed in the subdivision. They are reducing the overall uh, amount of recreation and green space, uh, and they're also just changing the layout from what was approved. And you have that previous um, site plan in your packet to see how that changed. So we're ultimately, what is being requested is to go from a site plan that is PD with, I believe, seven conditions to a site plan that you have before you with zero conditions. Um, since the work session, I can tell you I've spoken to probably two neighbors in the area who had some concerns um, about some drainage issues um, that I will need to investigate. I just learned about those late this afternoon, as well as um, a potential conversation about a fence or a buffer around the subdivision that goes back to 2006 that I just have not heard from. I don't need to check on that. Beyond those two late breaking concerns this afternoon, um, I did have um, a response from the developer that I did get to you about some of your questions from the work session about water access and maintenance. And so the developer did provide a response. I've given you a copy of that. Uh, beyond that, those are the only updates that I have. Uh, and I'll be happy to entertain any questions or you might have, but I do believe that the developer is here and plans to speak tonight uh, to speak some of the, to some of the questions you probably raised earlier on in the week. Okay. Commissioners, thank you, Jason. Do we have any questions for staff regarding this request? Any questions for staff, Commissioner? I don't know if it's for staff or for the uh, requester, but uh, right now it looks like um, some of this property is being sold on the off side of a creek or a pond. Mm -hmm. So, in, in essence, their property is landlocked. The, the, the owner does not have access to their own property mm -hmm. on, the, on the back. I know, I know it's wetland, but they're still paying taxes on it. Yes, sir. So, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I appreciate them putting in the easement to get back there, but it's only an easement to the farm. No way around it. We, um, and Commissioner, I don't know if it satisfies the concerns, but on the lake that uh, Mr. Tillman is calling Mallard Lake, which is the one on the very western side of the property, um, his response was that in the design phase, it's not depicted on the site plan, but if you look on between lots 314 and 315, what they were planning on doing is trying to provide an easement to go to the rear of that property. So that if you own property in front of the lake, if you needed to get back there on foot or you know bring something back there, you could. It would just be an access to the south off the end of that small cul-de-sac. So that was his, his initial response was, um, it wasn't included on the site plan. I think he'd be open to showing that, but that was his response to try to find a land access, or try to find a land access route. That's it's just not need. currently shown. That's all you need is some way for them to, to access it. Like I said, I dare say 90% of them will really get over there, but there's, there's going to be that 1% or 10% that doesn't mm -hmm. want to get over there. Yes, sir. And I think he'll speak to that, but ultimately that was his response was, um, either by condition or to have the site plan revised to show an easement that went to the up, upper left up there around three, between 314 and 315, which is the southwestern portion of that, to give those residents, you know, access to the rear property physically rather than by boat over that whole body of water. I'm just, I'm not sure I, because I read the, the handout that you provided, and I didn't see anything about that. Sure. If you own a green tent mm -hmm. and you want to go to the area that's shaded in green, mm -hmm. you need to get on the driveway, go down to the curve side, and go to the an easement. It's going to be between 314 and 315. Go to the walk up there, and then walk up more on that easement, mm -hmm. and then keep on crossing the other people's properties on an easement. 
Yes. I think the developer's response was either A, you, you know, you cross the body of water, or B, you go out to the street, down and around the back side, around the southern end of the lake through an easement to get to the back side of that property all on land. And just to be, I mean, this is this area is reservation area. But that's private area, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's all someone's yard. And I, I did note the comment about your preference to show it in a property owner's association or a community fashion, and you know, ultimately that you know, the developer would you know indicate that he wanted to try to keep it private at this time. But I think he'll be able to answer those questions further. Any other questions, Commissioner? For staff? Yes, just one more question. What is what is the as this being a uh, PD, how much is required to be green space? If you, since this was platted and developed before we have our current requirements, we did not formally have a green space requirement. So there's really, you know, we don't have a, if you go by the old rules, which is where this was done, we don't have a 5 or a 10% mark. Under current standards, you have to have at least 10% green space and at least 5% in addition to that is recreation space. So we have current numbers, but, you know, I don't think you can apply those because of when this was approved, because it was approved before we have our current standards. I think you can negotiate to try to get to those, but I think trying to say you have to have these now is, uh, in my opinion, I don't think that's going too far. I think so it's the existing site plan, the existing mm -hmm. PD, which, uh, the existing site plan, which indicates 25% green space, isn't that part of the agreed or agreement that this development has to provide? But what you're saying is it can't be changed. Yes. That the 25 percent was really based on their, here's what we're going to provide, not because staff was saying you have to provide 25 percent. Under our current rules, we have a solid bottom line that says you have to do this 10 and 5 split. But for, for this one, they were under a different set of rules, which was much more vague before we have these new, this new set of rules. Any other questions for staff? There being none, is there anyone here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward this time. Let's give us your name and address for the record. Anyone wishing to speak in favor? Thank you. Uh, my name is Young Tillman. I live at 7326 Winchase Drive, which is in Crickside West. And I just want to first say I appreciate you guys and ladies doing what you're doing because it's a, sometimes a difficult job. I've been in a similar situation. And I'd like to show you something. Uh, Jason and I talked about this at my mind. When uh, we started this project and the, the first plan that had all the green space on it that was shown to you. We were in the throes of trying to decide we were working through a, a soil evaluation on the entire piece of property as to whether or not the, the, the project would be feasible. I mean, as a feasibility portion that we had to look at. And so when we, when we did phase one, uh, what you've seen is a conceptual plan, but when we did phase one, thank you, sir. Oh, uh, how you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? We're good. Yeah. Uh, when, when, when we did phase one, this, this is an engineering plan. Mm -hmm. Jason and I discussed the difference between a conceptual plan and an engineering plan. And uh, when I turned this, uh, the, the engineering plan into the engineers, and we got approval there, I, I, I mistakenly thought that that was the, the plan that I was going to go by. Yeah. Now, I, that, that was the, the uh, PD plan, and that that was accepted. But no, nobody's fault but my own. I just made a, 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 an assumption there. And uh, the staff has been very gracious and very good to help me with all this. And uh, I, th I think we got a great staff. I really do. We, we, you, you have a wonderful staff here in the county. And um, I would, I would, uh, I'm here today to try to get the thing 
solidified and, and clarified <laughs> so we can so we can go forward. And I thought your questions from last week were very were very uh, appropriate. The reason for the big change from the first plan to the second was that we were going to have to build a, our own personal wastewater system and put in a large drain field or spray field in the middle. Actually, we're going to use a drip irrigation. Uh, Franklin, you remember the first one we did at Stone Creek that was under, underground. So. And uh, it, it really, as we looked at it, we were beginning to wonder whether or not this project was even feasible. I mean, from a, from a financial standpoint, it didn't, it, it wasn't doing too good. But uh, Mike Allen, who, who was the current uh, utilities engineer for Lowndes County, mentioned to us an E1 system. And we went up to Atlanta to a subdivision at E1, uh, and, and looked at the E1 system. The E1 system is a very simple system that was designed by Westinghouse back in the 70s. It's been used in Georgia <coughs> since about the mid, mid 80s. And basically, it's, it's outside of everybody's house, it's this little pump station. And it, it is, uh, has, has got a washing machine pump and a garbage grinder called Westinghouse designed it. It's a very simple thing. And we've uh, been using them for some time and they're very effective. I think ecologically they're, they're, they're a better deal because there's no I and I. We don't have the engineers here, but I think that's infusion and infiltration. In other words, stormwater doesn't come into the sewage system and groundwater doesn't come in. Therefore, what you're treating is sewage. It isn't, it isn't something else. So we uh, looked at putting a force main down uh, Union Road and worked out some details there and had another developer come in that wanted to do it and had some other people of interest that wound up that we did it ourselves but we ran that force main from Creekside West through uh, Pikes Landing, Pikes Creek Landing under I-75 down uh, Union Road to a drop basin that is near Valwood. But all of that sewage goes into a county system that, that and I think, I think ecologically, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, good, it's a good thing. Uh, when we took the cost of our processing plant, the drip field, plus the cost of the land on the project, <coughs> plus more land that we possibly would have for development, and, and we found these other people interested, the project became a fiscal uh, ability, a uh, physical, uh, it, it was fi financially viable. Uh, now, the, the plan I just handed out was, was done in 10-28-06. So that was what we, in my mind, I was working with. But like I said, I know what Jason was looking at. And that wouldn't, that would not have been able to do. One of the reasons that we moved the, the uh, playground area from the lower right hand section is that other subdivisions in um, one of the big ones out in Texas uh, that, that we went and visited had found that it's best not to put um, recreational areas back in a corner where they can't be seen. Uh, we've had some problems at Stone Creek on one particular thing with kids in the middle of the night getting in, in, in there and uh, just hanging out and maybe causing some problems. So Jason and, and the staff, as we worked, they wanted property that was more accessible and usable for recreational purposes and was more centrally located. And so we, we've tried to do that and yet preserve some of the privacy that people have as they back out up to these uh, preservation 
areas. Uh, the, the, the privacy is, is a big thing. And ability to get to the property, uh, Mr. Hall, is, a, is certainly a, a, a very important factor. And we, we are going to provide that. It was on some of the earlier designs and it just simply got left off. I'm sorry. But, but it's, it was never our intention not to allow the properties to be, uh, the uh, property owners to be able to get back to that side of their property. Um, tied to that question was the maintenance of the lake. Who's going to take responsibility for uh, maintaining the lake and the property around the lake? Which is a good question. It's a good question. And it is, uh, in my written comments to you, I, I gave you the page and deed number of the, uh, the supplemental declaration of covenants, condition, and restrictions for Creekside West Stage 2. And they recorded in D book page 569, uh, the book 569, page 240. The bottom line is that the individual property owners are charged with responsibility for caring for that lake and their property. If they don't do it, then the covenant by covenant, the, the, the property owners association can come in and do whatever maintenance is necessary. I think you may be worried about uh, the grounds maintenance, uh, maintenance on the dam, and uh, also uh, the structure, the drainage structures that are in place that, that drains the lake. The lake, um, that particular lake, uh, it, it really affords a lot of detention for stormwater and the wetlands or the preservation area below it, which hadn't been touched at all. It does the same thing. It, 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 it offers detention and uh, and privacy to those people that 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 will live there. Uh, How many lots were planted? That's one of your questions. It's 232 on this plan, uh, and that's down, like Jason said, from two, two, almost 300. We progressed it up to 242 just in case we find a place that it works out we can, we can do another lot or two. It has to do with the final engineering. Not all this has been engineered. It's a large piece of property. And it, you have to do it by phases. Uh, how many have been built or developed? There's 109 this, uh, this, that have been developed, 109 lots, uh, which is 47% of the build out. If the build out um, winds up being 232. Um, the only other addition that, that none of us really have seen, I don't think, uh, but um, Jason, I think we need to mark the county well sites. Okay. It's not. It's that's we we hadn't we didn't get that done, but um, it's about almost an acre there, and it is. No, I can't see that there. It's marked on there, sir, as is a it? well site. Yes, sir. Is it? Okay. It's right there behind 19 and 20 and 18. All right, I didn't see. Yes, that. it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But that was just something I saw. That I thought. Be a good idea if we had it had it delineated. Um, that was property we gave to the county and built the well and so forth. Um, any questions for me? Commissioners, any questions for presenter? Just a clarification. Commissioner Glavin. Yeah, the plan that you distributed to us, that's the 2006 yes, plan. And the plan that Jason, you gave us the original, that's dated 2004. The plan that the rezoning was originally approved in February of 2006. Was this, so is this, is this plan that was it's got to be. used because this one differs from the plan that... It, the one that was approved with the rezoning case is the one that's in your packet that looks like this. Okay. So that was the original concept plan. And then what Mr. Tillman did is him and the other developer at the time took that plan to the engineers and said, okay, now we're ready to really invest. Can you please build this out, especially with the sewer change? 
And Mr. Tillman at the time had that plan cleared through our own engineer, county engineer. Um, but planning staff, et cetera, did not say this is the new master plan because we were going off the rezoning plan. That's right. This one, so this one came through the county? It, it, yes, ma'am. That, when that future track plan came to us, it was approved by the engineer for road construction purposes. When we saw it for our preliminary purposes, we realized, okay, that, that is much different than what we thought. So we worked with Doc on the first few phases, but eventually we came to the conversation of it's time to update your plan if you're really going to proceed with that direction rather than what was approved by the board. So what you're saying is that the first time this plan was actually seen in the county was just recently? No, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting... Every time Doc did a phase on the, um, he's done really three phases. <coughs> One of the things we require is, can you show us a future track plan? That was his first future track plan. And we, we said, okay, you know, we'll work with you on this phase, but we knew internally that we needed to work with Doc because that master plan was so different than what was approved. We worked on the first phase, we got a little more firm on the second, and we got really firm on the third, not trying to hold him up, but just to say, okay, Doc, it's really time we revisit this. And it was at that time, after the third phase, that Doc realized, oh, you're not looking at this, you're looking at the rezoning plan that we had been looking at all along. And so that's where we really came back and got together and said, okay, it's really time to go back before the commissioners because either we need to really revise your future track plan or we need to bring it back before the commissioners and, and, and have a master plan update, which is the option he chose. So we had a rezoning concept plan that was approved that we believe governs it because it does. And then we had this engineering approved plan that he was operating off that was, in our opinion, just so different than what was approved initially. And the reason I'm asking all this is because this, this plan is a lot more in line with the, the plan that the revised plan yes. looking at. Yes. And the initial one yes. is, uh, I'm not sure what we, I mean, if you compare this to that, the changes are not that mm -hmm. drastic. So I'm, I'm not clear on what we are meeting. And, and that was my thought too when I saw it. Back. Yeah. I mean, comparing this one to this one, it's your concept plan to this thing has mm -hmm. significant changes. Comparing this one to that, it's, there are issues, you know, mm -hmm. there are things that need to be resolved as far as property ownerships, but as far as the land distribution, there are some changes. I feel the SAC was created here, the road was extended there. So I'm just not, I think I'm, what I'm asking for is clarification on what we need. What we are, or direction, what we are to act on tonight. Mm -hmm. The only official master plan that has been approved is the one with the rezoning case. That was the last time we were here holding a public hearing. So that original plan that I'm sorry I didn't put it in my presentation, but this this was the this was the initial mm -hmm. site plan that was approved by the county commissioners. So this is what is governing the future development of the neighborhood. When Doc has been developing, we've worked with them on a few phases, but then we eventually were like, okay, it's, if this is your true direction, and, and we believe it is, it's time to go back and update it because it's so different than where we started. Okay. And to me, the main difference is about you know, where we are is the, the drop in lots. He has really <coughs> larger lots and less lots. He has less green space, and dominantly that's due because he wants to try to rearrange it put it in people's yards, and also because he's doing a sewer rather than a septic system. And then the final part is, um, he just changed the layout. You know, the layout is, is different than, than what he originally proposed. So this is what's currently what we call the governing master plan. But, you know, after the county commission approved it, they ran the sewer line, which was a huge deal. And then they got an engineer and invested in them in some analysis to say, okay, go from this concept drawing to something that is much more refined. And, and that's what you have there in October is those two main changes is a sewer line, that negotiation was successful. And then also the engineers really you know, invested in the property now that the rezoning was approved and tried to engineer what this, what this would really look like. And there was an immediate difference there that staff recognized and we just let this go to a point where we finally said, okay, it's, it's, it's time. And we felt like now was the appropriate time. And we didn't want to hold Doc up from phases, but we did want to say, okay, it, it's time we go back because it's so different. If you're going to continue to go this direction, it's time to do an update. Um, 
and he and he understood and, and especially when we found out what we were comparing it to and we went from there I mean I can try to go into detail but I'm trying to timeline wise it just there were changes that were made and when those changes reached a certain point which really for us was the approval of the last phase we believed it was time to either modify his plans or modify the plan we had on file. Commissioner Bolson. No, I got I asked this question only because of my experience with South Korea. But it, it really concerns me on the west side of this and on the east side of this. What we've essentially created by the covenants and this plat is a smaller eight lot homeowner association and a smaller ten lot I'm saying the fact of a more association that will have to deal with issues together on the pine and any issues that come up with Frank's Creek or that preservation area rather than the entire homeowner association dealing with that. The entire homeowner association has the right to come in and deal with those if the homeowners don't. But 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 you I mean you have a situation here, let's say there is a problem with this pond. And grass begins growing into the end of it on 306 and it needs to be cleaned out. And it's affecting the entire rest of the eight lots that touch that pond. Well, if lot 306 doesn't do it and the homeowner association doesn't stand doesn't do it, then you get seven other lot owners who have to all band together and try to do something. And it just seems to me in the long run that it makes a heck of a lot more sense to make the homeowner association own that pond and the land behind it. And on the other hand, over here on the other side, you know, if there's a blockage of Frank's Creek and it starts backing up on other things, then you've got to get 10 lots that own part of Frank's Creek together mm -hmm. to do something. Rather than the whole homeowner association getting together at that point. It just seems to me, collectively, the homeowner association is going to be better suited to deal with those problems than a smaller 10 and 8 group. I, and ultimately, I mean, they have the power to do that by the covenant. Right. But I it, mean, that's, that's we the know thing. the issues that have come up with Don Craig related to the same sort of thing. I'm just saying I think they're going to, it may be 15 years from now. Right. But I think right. this is setting it up to do the same thing. Well, yeah. uh, another thing in the mix is, is we were told that if the problem, uh, Jason, correct me if this is wrong, but if, if the Ponte Owners Association owned the lake, mm -hmm. owned the we had to provide a 60 foot right of way into the lake. And that, that's <coughs> not excessive to us <coughs> to have to. A 60 foot up. access? Yeah, for the access. For, Is that for right, Dick? And going on the initial site plan, that was our response. But since we're updating the site plan, we can actually show a 20 foot easement as, a, as an alternative. So the initial site plan, we were going for 60 feet, but since we have the update, we have the flexibility to do a 20-foot access easement since we're at this point. So per the old site plan, 60 feet. Per this new site plan, we believe we can propose an alternative 20-foot easement if that will be better for the situation. But that spring lake, which is a small lake next door to it, those lots actually are planted to go out in the lake. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason for it is because I, I, I was under the impression that the property owners had to, had, had to own it. I mean, had to own, either the property owners association, we had to provide a 60 foot easement in there, or we had to deed it to the property owners. So and it provided 20 foot, foot for that change. And provided it. the 20 foot. And so we did it. To, we, we sold several of the lots. I mean, you know, oh, these are already sold. Yes, uh, on Spring Lake, and, and we got one lot sold on, on our land, the bigger lake. So, you know, uh, I, I just think 60 feet is a bit excessive, in my opinion. But that's, you know, don't make, don't make the rules. I can just see knowing how close ones go. That somebody buys lots 307 through 313 and they have no idea of their responsibilities until something comes up. Well, one of the things we do and, and so is we, we give them right. a copy of the restricted 
the supplemental code. Right. Yeah. I just know practically speaking, that's, that's what's going to arise. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. and I know you can't, <laughs> you can't fix stupid sometimes, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, in this case, it just seems to me there's a practical solution, and that would be making the boundaries of those lots the lake boundary. And the, and the property owners own the, the area behind the lake and the area behind it, but that's just well, we're, just we're trying to, and we're trying to preserve everything behind it. I mean, yeah. So it's, it, all that green space is still preserved, even though it's in somebody's lot. It's not that we decreased the green space. It's just it's it's in it's it's in the behind of somebody's lot. And we have found very attractive that people want to back up to to green space. Yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Dr. Tillman, thank you for your time. Thank you. We have exhausted our in favor of time period, so uh, I will ask now, is anyone here wishing to speak against this request? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward this time. State your name and your address for the record, sir. Thank you. I'm Larry Webb at 8733 Old Valmont Road, 8 Iron. The problem that happened out there is the excess water. The bigger, the more they develop, more water is coming off. And it's flooding Old Valmont Road in two places. Plus, my property is at the, on the west side, lower corner. And uh, at one time, I'd like to sell my property. But if it's has some flood water come off of it, it's not going to be desirable. And I don't know what kind of plans they have for trying to contain the, or the flood water, the excess water. But as they level off the ground and dig up the trees, uh, the water just runs over the top of the ground and doesn't throw heat. And, uh, it's a chip with him behind me. He has a problem getting in, in and out during the rainy season. If it wasn't for a private road, they couldn't get through the county road uh, to access to 122. I see where your property is located, Mr. Webb, but where is your other, where's your property located at, sir? Uh, <clears throat> my property is next to his on Old Valley Austin Road. Yes, sir. And your name again? John Chitwood, 7546, Old Valley Austin Road. Okay. Mr. Webb, just stand up. So, Jason, I'm just, just curious as Mr. Webb stand there. Have, have, have you heard any stories confirming flooding and such while Mr. Webb is standing there? No, sir. I, to me, I'm, I talked to Mr. Webb, Mr. Chipwood briefly before the meeting. That's what I tried to kind of report you. I learned about some things late this afternoon. The only thing I could do is follow up with the county engineer, who really I think this falls under as far as who has the authority to comment on, you know, flooding issues to the south. That, you know, is the subdivision involved? Is there an issue with the road? This is the first I've I've heard of that. I drove the area. I've been there before, but it was dry when I went. You know, and, and uh, I didn't go after one of these big rains we've had. So. To me, I can only ask the authority that I have, and I'll just need some time to do that. Okay. So, county engineer would be in contact with the web? Yes, sir. I, I gave them you both his um, name and phone number before the meeting to try to get in contact with, you know, who I felt like was the appropriate staff person to try to address that. And what I'll do is I can plan on following up with the county engineer tomorrow so we can try to get a response ready before the county commissioner meeting. Okay. But that, to me, are my, are my plans. Without y'all asking, those would be my plans. Any questions for the presenter from Commissioner? Mr. Webb, thank you for your time, sir. Is there going to be any type of uh, security fence on the back side of the property? I have problems with the tenants, homeowners coming over on my side and uh, hunting equipment disappearing. And what, what's disappearing, sir? Is, will there be a security fence on the back side of the property? They've got a berm and a fence on the front side of 122. And I, I would say that that would probably lift up to individual homeowners to put their own fence there. So there's a lot of sale. I don't, I don't know that the developer is required to do any kind of fencing in there, but it's probably just up to the individual homeowners, sir. Well, if, if I may ask one follow-up question. Yes, 
chief staff in that regards. The difference between the, the abuses, the, uh, Mr. Webb's property is PA and the PD. Is there no requirement as far as uh, offense between the different no, no For if it was a multifamily product, yes. But since it's single family, we don't have a a normal requirement for single family versus an EA, you know, single family type residence. We don't have that. For multifamily, yes, not for single family. Mm -hmm. You can see on the site plan near Mr. Webb's property they have that twenty five foot non encroachable easement slash landscape buffer indicated. Mm -hmm. um, you know the developer may be able to comment on that, but I I don't know of a, a requirement that would make him fence a portion of the perimeter um, without a private property owner just fencing their own lot. So this is that was a new issue to me. We probably want to get perspective from the developer, but I don't I don't know of something that would make him do it besides a condition or you know the indication on the site plan. Well, a green space, but on the lower side, they run my property that to sort of slow the water down. Or? Well, uh, sir, I know that Jason is going to uh, put you in touch with engineering, and, and I know that they will be out to uh, to look at your concerns and see what they can do with it going forward. Uh, just as far as us, we're just looking at the land use application here, and uh, I know they'll be with you to take care of see if they can resolve your issues. I think that's true to Jason. Yes, sir. I mean, I plan on talking to the engineer, and he, he may be very aware of what's going on, but I, I don't know enough to comment that it's an issue or it's not an issue. But to me, that's where I think it's appropriate is the engineering office. And uh, I left the number and the name to that same gentleman here okay. tonight. So I expect a follow-up, but I just won't be able to get it you know, right now. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Have a good evening. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward. State your name and address for the record, please. Well, my name is John Chicklet. I live at 7526 Old Bell Officer Road. Uh, when we originally talked about this, we had, uh, there was a lot of things they said they were going to do, that, but they, they really haven't done it, specifically the sewer system. That was one of their big selling points that they brought to the commission during that time. And obviously they didn't do it, they changed it all. But during that period, they also said they wanted to make this area just like Stone Creek. And they wanted to make it secure. That one entrance, and they were going to build a fence around the area with an apron, put firm fence and a hedge. And that was what they said they were going to do. Uh, that was one of the best my concern. I mean, I live right next door to it. All they have to do is walk across there. They can go fishing in my pond, you know, go through the, you know, my, my garage or whatever they want to do. You know, there's nothing to keep them from doing it. Uh, they said they were going to build a chance. I, you know, I assume that they were going to do it. So I think they should. Jason says, I'm just curious if, if there's any written verbiage as to that from your, your original Approval. Sir, give me a minute. I can try to check back on the minutes, but if you look on the site plan, the original site plan does show a, a 25 foot buffer along that western property line that you know looks like they just maintained. Um, you know, to me, a 20 foot buffer could be as little as you know undisturbed or as much as they actually go in there and plant. I I would have to check the minutes to see if they actually commented on some kind of burned buffer in that area. Um, hold on, sir, I don't. It was not, it was not a condition, and I don't see in the minutes where they talked about, you know, what that landscape buffer would entail, burn fence, so. It's not on the minutes, but I only have the minutes from the County Commission. I don't have those from the Planning Commission. But it, the site plan, to me, the evidence does show on that original site plan a 25-foot buffer on that edge. That's as much as I can, so I can comment. Is that in the County Records, 25-foot Yes, sir. But yes, sir. But nothing about a fencing application? No. No, sir. I don't have a commitment for a fence or a berm. 
or details on what that landscaping might look like, whether that's undisturbed or you know planted landscaping. So that's the that's the historic record that I have just based on you know our research from tonight and talking to Mr. Chipwood well, is they show that, but I don't show details of fence or berms or what that landscaping would look like. From a practical standpoint, we haven't made it down to <coughs> plat that section of that's correct. phase yet. Um, but it, to me, the record that I show, can you put your thumb on something, is what you show there, um, the 25-foot buffer along that western side. <coughs> Yes, sir. They rolled that right over. Um, they didn't show it as a, you know, they didn't color it in, but it shows 25 foot non encroachable easement slash landscape. All right, so we're still in place. Yes, sir. And I mean, I can ask the developer to, you know, can you clarify what you meant by that? But that, that has remained since the initial site plan. But there, there is a buffer still in place, or even on even what we're going to approve tonight with, with, with the new drawings, it's still in place a 25 foot buffer. And the only thing we have to go by is Jason with the public record about fencing and stuff of that nature. So, I really oh, yeah, I, 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 I was here for the meeting and I knew I know what they said they were going to do. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they did put a, a small fence you know, continuing on down 122 yes, on the new start that they built when they built houses. But it's nothing like the original gate and the eight foot firm and the fence and the edge. It's like they said they were. In addition, in addition to that, I really don't care how you develop the land. You know, I mean, I don't. You know, I don't care about the lakes and all that. But there is a problem with with water runoff. And whenever they started developing, uh, all the neighbors that they're not here tonight, that's the way it is. But some of the others were up there then. Uh, they didn't come tonight. But all about us the road it runs off of uh, 122. And uh, the water runs, and I know they built a lake there on the western edge of the property, uh, but it's not, I wouldn't consider it a holding pond because it stays full all the time. It's, it's never, so I mean, if you have a holding pond, it's got to be empty enough to, to hold the water when it rains, you know. But the water runs down 122, it comes down the neighborhood, and it goes across over and the road. So the last rain that we had when we had four inches of rain, I could not get up, I could not get on the over the road. It flooded, totally flooded. It did if it wasn't for a private road that was developed when they developed our, our neighborhood there, we wouldn't be able to get in, in and out of our house. Uh, also on the Mormon Road, Mormon side of the <coughs> <clears throat> uh, old Road. It floods down there too. So that really is the only way that we can get in and out whenever we have to have rain. You know, if we have a couple inches maybe or a, you know, it gets bad, that's all dirt roads do. It's good. It's uh, it floods. And and I didn't know about the engineer, I haven't talked to him. You know, <coughs> we do have a lot of water that comes down that never was there before. I've lived there for 25 years. Until the development was done, we never had a problem. Yes, sir. So, well, we'll we'll have Jason get in contact mm -hmm. with the uh, county engineer, with you and Mr. Webb, and see if we can get some answers going forward to help alleviate some of your flooding situations. Okay. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. your time this evening. Mm -hmm. This will conclude this portion portion of this case tonight, commissioners. Any other discussion amongst ourselves for? Uh, <coughs> We will take a motion on this report. <coughs> Any other conversation? Any discussion or anything? I reckon that engineering report will be available for the, for the county when they ultimately have to rule on this? Yes, sir. I mean, I, knowing the county engineer, when I tell him that there were a couple of citizens who had some concerns there about flooding, he's going to want to be prepared for the county commission. Well, I know it doesn't go to any good behavior. Yes, sir. I expect him, knowing my, my experience, I expect him to be ready for that hearing on the 10th.
Any other questions, discussion? There being none, at this time I will receive a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recommend approval of REZ 20, uh, 26, uh, approval to the County Commission of REZ 2016-11 with two conditions. The conditions being that the west boundaries of Block 307, 309, 310, 311, 312, and 13 be revised to be the, the gauge of the lake as shown, not to go across the lake into the wetlands. And also condition number two, the east boundary of lots 412 through 420 be revised to be the boundary of the preservation area shown. That's the green line. That's going to alleviate any of these homeowners on the Franks Creek side from being caught up. Uh, we have a problem with beavers up in that part of the county, and if they get up there and build and dam up Franks Creek, it's going to back up all the way across all that land across there. And it's a distinct possibility. I know I bad them all the time on my place. Okay. I will pose this question to Commissioner, Commissioner Fulton. Do you see going forward if they stop them at those boundaries, needing the access of the Homeowner Association at that point? I think they be got I mean, they're drawing, they're drawing a 25 foot easement that goes between 314, or they're going to, I guess, between 314 and 315. Right. Area. Even on the other side, too, since they're going to stop at the boundary of Frank Street and want to extend on the other side. There's going to need to be some easement of access there. Probably between 411, 412, and down the property line. Does he need to include that in his condition, you think? Or? That would be bad to have a third condition. To, to have a, an easement to the offside of the, to both the areas on, on, the east, the east, east on the eastern boundary of the lake and on the western boundary of the uh, wetlands area that we, uh, that, that's along there, the preservation area. Like from 420 into 420 so everybody else can access it. And that would also probably increase his amount of uh, gray space percentage in there too to where it would get it up from the current percentage. Mr. Carmelo, did you catch all three of those conditions? Okay, you're good. Are you okay with those conditions? Second, the motion. Okay, so we have a first from commission. I mean, I have a motion, Commission Hall approval with three conditions. What? Could you repeat the third condition? He, he wants to come out. I mean, uh, Selena, on this, we have a we have an easement on the western boundaries. Mm -hmm. We do not have one on the eastern boundaries. So he wants to include a twenty-five foot easement on the eastern boundaries for those ten lots that that mm -hmm. touch Frank Street. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, is that what you have too? Thank you, ma'am. So we have a motion of approval. We have a second from Commissioner Fulton. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. We have five for all those against, please signify by raising your right hand. Two opposed. The motion passes 5-2. Commissioners, thank you so much for your time this evening. Jason, any other business that we